Welcome back to Stuck in the Nail. Thank you for joining us this far in our journey. Um, today we're kicking off episode seven, so thank you for lending again. Thank you for lending us your ears. Um, I'm Daft Hobbit, and with me as always. Hey, what's up? I'm Echo. Yep, I'm here. I did it. <laughs> He's, I made it. He's still here. Time. Yeah, it's crazy that we're doing it's just it's just cool to see this happen. We've been talking about this for a long time. And here we are seven episodes in and it feels like I just blinked my eyes, you know, like heaven. Uh, seven. Seven heaven. Huh. It's cool. Uh, it's cool well, to see it happening. And we, again, appreciate all the feedback we've been getting um, from the Star Citizen community and, and people with their opinions and, and supporting our opinions and stuff. It's just been really cool. So we hope to keep the machine churning uh, and just get some more content to you guys. That's basically the, the word of mouth. I, I feel like I do this. I overdo this. And actually in one of the pre 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 like when we were prepping for one of these episodes, I was like, I gotta shut the fuck up about that. I just sound <laughs> fucking desperate, <laughs> but uh, we really do appreciate the word of mouth. I mean, we don't like, yes, we're on Instagram. Yes. We're on TikTok and all that other shit, but we don't really promote beyond that, you know? So it's a lot, you, a lot of you guys sharing this stuff around for us and uh, thank you. So, yeah. It's majority. Thanks. Well, all you guys passing the word, sharing the links and stuff. So, Again, yeah. shout out to you guys. Um, and again, leave your comments, leave your gripes. You know, if we say stuff that offends you, we want to hear about it too. We probably may, may or may not apologize about it. Um, but yeah, you know, we're, we're here to learn just as much as anybody. So we want to know if we're wrong, if we need to be corrected, let us know, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we do have some good topics today. Um, we had uh, another PVP op as we do. That's our goal. In the game or a PvP org, because um, we just want that battle, we want that fight. So, how, what do you think about that, Echo? We fought CKD, right? What are your thoughts? Yeah, so we assisted uh, Omni Astro Corp Corporation. See, this is why I don't do the intros. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, anyways, yeah. <laughs> so we helped uh, OAC in, in a org v org battle against CKD, which both great great groups. Go check them out. They're linked somewhere. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so we, I was a little nervous about it because um, OAC approached me and they were like, hey, we help us. We want you in tanks. And that's not something that we normally do. Like mm -hmm. we are a very small community to begin with. So like, you know, most of our focus is on ground combat, right? Like, so FP, like very specifically infantry gameplay. Um, but I, th I took it as an opportunity for us to be able to learn some new stuff about vehicles and how they interact with infantry and the environment and, um, you know, how they what it looks like to be in one of those in combat. And I think we took away a fuck ton of after action reviews from that, man, like just lessons learned, um, understandings of vehicles and their limitations, mm -hmm. um, understanding what vehicles like what their capabilities are. I, I mean, there's a ton that I learned from that. Um, and all I did was sit in a commander, a tank commander seat. So, yeah. Yeah. And it, it's really cool. Like I, in, in the actual Marine Corps, I, as an infantryman, I worked with tanks. Um, I got, I got to work with them on a few occasions, never like in a combat situation. Thank God. But, uh, cause they're, they're scary. Tanks are incredibly powerful. But uh, yeah. a lot of those tactics can be pulled right into Star Citizen, too. I found right off the bat, I mean, tanks, it, it took us a while for the engagement to unfold, right? Because as mm -hmm. it does, we so it's it kind of a more what some would say boring, right? We were in more of a patrolling pattern, setting up this perimeter for the, the OAC who was defending a bunker. Our job, if yep. I remember correctly, was to slow the enemy's advance because we had so few numbers an effective perimeter wasn't really on on the dinner plate, right? We, there's no way we could have yeah. had an effective perimeter with uh, just our crew. I mean, with that objective of, right? So when you're looking at that, like, if I'm OAC planning this, like, well, I only know that the privateers are going to be able to afford this many people. How do I best effectively use them? And what's their, what's their overall objective going to be? Well, with six guys and mm -hmm. three vehicles, you know, like, you can't really it's hard for you to be like, all right, I need six tanks, right? Well, cause the tanks take multiple people to, to operate. And so instead of stopping, you know, having this outer cordon and stopping, we were more or less like uh, almost like a mobile LPOP 
And we were just there to delay, which delay is an actual military tactic, um, right? Which gives you know your friendlies the opportunity to, yes, harden up or get out or whatever the case is. In this case, it was a time limit that we had to defeat, and so that delay tactic actually helped us, um, yeah, win win the the overall. Yeah, so the win win parameters as like an op goes, an operation that you plan with orgs. You only have so much time on a Saturday night or a Sunday afternoon. So time is always a factor. And we were talking about that last episode, time. I mean, if you think about it, like the, the countries of this world, they, they print money. Uh, we create stuff. Like look at all the stuff we're using, right? This was all created. The laptop in front of me, the, the microphone. Everyone's creating stuff because there's, there's a, an abundance of things. But the one thing no one can print or make is time. Unless, you know, you're Bruce Willis and you're in the time travel movie, right? Like Bruce Looper. Bruce fucking Willis. Yep. <laughs> but time is, is one of the most valuable resources that any group can manage in a tactical sense. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, it was. I think it was a great call by the OAC and you saying, okay, hey, here's what we can do. We have 30 yeah. minutes to defend this bunker from the CKD forces. How can we delay them as long as possible? Because um, that does yeah. matter. And it was, it worked. And I want to specifically call out Bloodthorn on that. Like, you know, the the OAC gave the privateers a a host of accolades, um, which they earned. They did well, really well. I think we did really well, but we wouldn't have been successful had it not been for Bloodthorn's detailed planning and analysis of like how to best use us. So I would argue that the reason we were successful was because Bloodthorn was able to take that time management into consideration and then best apply what numbers he had available to him. So bravo, right. hats off to him, man. Like, he did a really good job on that planning process. Damn right he did. That was awesome. And, yeah, you, you yeah, the time constraint, too, it's like, oh, it's not. It's it's absolutely realistic because we could fill in the blank. In 30 minutes, what's going to happen? More reinforcements will arrive. Uh, you know, like, the whatever you want to fill in for a flavor text. And like, that will happen in the verse. More people will show up if you're not quick. So time is of the essence on an assault, especially against a fortified enemy, someone who's prepped. Like, you you need to move swiftly and attack. Speed, surprise, violence of action. Um, And not to to make any bad blood here, um, because we love the CKD guys as well, but we were able to take away those things. They they put up a great fight. Oh, yeah. dude, they put up a phenomenal fight. Like, I, this is by no means a hit on either org. Um, I think no. uh, time management and planning was really well done by the OAC. And I think the response and reaction from CKD, once they understood what we were doing, was phenomenal as well. I mean, they were yeah. able to break through our lines, at, you know, and take down some of our assets. So absolutely, absolutely hats off to the CKD for that, right? Right. The the one improve that we shared with them, and they, they agreed too, there's just like the time. Right, because there was a time limit for that event. Yeah. In the future, when there's not a time limit, doing what they did is super solid. Probing, finding the weakness, getting in there, taking your time. And we were just talking about right. this today, just on a simple room clearing. Like, there's a push and pull. There's a give and take with time. Do I do I push, or do I hang back? Do I, I balance that out? Uh, right. If you if you take if you bite off more than you can chew. You know, uh, on on the scale, like you can you can go micro with it on the individual. Like, do I if I take two extra steps and bite off more than I can chew, maybe I won't get into cover quick, right? If if I and then you can you can scale it out. If I'm a general on a two fronts, I have a war going on over here, a war going on over there. If I push one force too far and extend myself too much, then I'm 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 weak, and right. you, you can scale it up and down. So I thought CK did. D did a great job. Um, I feel like... Oh, yeah. I'll say this. I feel like they planned. They had plans and contingencies, which are fucking phenomenal to have, but they planned on getting into a fight in the woods where we were surrounding the objective. They planned on these things. And so when you when you plan for that, like, you tend to use it. So they reacted well, but the time limit, they got sucked into, right? So because of those plans were in place they ended up using those plans and they executed, right. which was great. But the objective was lost, like the time taking that bunker in time. Um, and that's what I feel like you and I have done well in the past. It's not, not getting sucked into a firefight over here 
because uh, that's that's been the case for some of us. We we've done very time sensitive missions as well and been very successful mm-hmm. in the past. And we had to, we had to like okay, here's our plan, and we sat there with a knife just dicing it up. Okay, no, right. We don't want to get sucked into a battle outside, so we got to cut that plan off. We'll have it as a contingency. Keep it on the back burner. But like our goal is here. Like, do not get in a fight. Get in right. there quick and fast. Or if you do, break contact from that fight, right? Yeah. Um, to, to tie in uh, last week's episode, right, of patrolling, you know, if you're patrolling from point A to point B and you do take contact, is that fight really important? Is it? Can you leave <laughs> right. a small unit there to sort of repel that fight? Can you – is there something you can do mm-hmm. to um, delay them – and continue your mission forward, right? Uh, and I think CKD did do that, but it, I, I have to agree with CKD. I don't think the time limit that we had set was enough. That's yeah, right? that's another um, point. Yeah, I think that was too short. Now both sides had agreed on that, and I didn't have any part of that. Had I known that prior, maybe I would have been like, or known what I know now about vehicles. I wouldn't even see prior knowing what I know now about vehicles, I definitely, and the distances we were at, I definitely would have been like, mm, th- that time limit's right. a little too short. Especially, so I'll give them credit to that. Yes. Especially because we were trying something specific. We wanted, from what I understand that Bloodthorn and the OAC wanted, they made that whole operation to test vehicle SOPs and TTTs and mm-hmm. like how to conduct a vehicle assault. So that's right. why, for this training, essentially is what it was, then we can up the parameters. But there's also some credence to it in a real world, right? Like um, the Navy SEAL team, they, they can't ever be like, hey, uh, hey, terrorists, you know, we didn't get to the hostage in time the last time. Right. <laughs> so can you just wait a little bit longer while we preach so we right. can save the hostage this time? Like you can't, in a real world, like you can't. So... In, in real well, I mean, world, there's always like, a time constraint. I mean, yeah. I can I I can speak from experience from that. Like, if you're mm-hmm. going after a target, and after multiple, uh, you know, reconnaissances and understanding, like all co- there's all kinds of stuff that goes into that, um, um, which is like deep level fucking yeah. high level bullshit. But getting that information, turning it into intel, and understanding like this dude's only going to be here for fucking thirty minutes. That's it. That's your window. Do you want yeah. more time? Yes, we would always love oh, more yes. time. But if that's your window, that's your fucking window. That's your cutoff, man. Yeah. There is no like. You can't print more. Yeah, you can't <laughs> print more. It's just you it got 30 minutes, so you need to plan around that. And I think that's often lost in video games because it's like, oh, well, whatever. You know what I mean? It's not that important. And and, and, it, and, it, and truly it isn't, right? Like, yeah. I mean, there is no reason to. Con- but if you are of the mind that you want to complete this objective and that's the timeline time limit you're given. That's the timeline you have to work with. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. It's like, you got to make an adjustment. The quarterback has to be able to call an audible when he sees the defense shift. Um, So when there's a a change at you, you know, we were talking about um, some mil sim orgs that we know um, and they do things very well. Uh, It's like, it's choreographed dance, you know, you know, disembark, uh, patrol, stack up on the door, assault the room. Like, they have these things down. Like, I've seen it in ARMA groups. We're starting to see it more in Star Citizen groups, which is great. But we're seeing these these choreographed things and these repetitious things, which are great. But what happens if we throw a wrench in there? You know, what happens if someone does attack you when you stack up on the door before you go? That happened to a right. lot of our boys in uh, in OAF-1. In the early days of the Iraq War, a lot yep. of Marines got trained by SWAT officers, and SWAT teams are used to having an entire cordon, like the whole city block is shut down, and they can operate there. They can have a 30-man stacked up, nut to butt, ready to breach a building, right. and they don't have to worry about a sniper or something. I mean, it's always a possibility. But combat's different. Yeah. Combat is... I mean, the, the, the term all is fair, right? Like all is fair. that is 100% true. You know, mm-hmm. like now us NATO forces, we kind of prohibit ourselves a little bit and I get it. I understand, yeah. you know, there's some chivalry and all, you know, some chivalry, <laughs> sure. Whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's because we're dealing with real lives. We're not dealing with digital pixels. Right. But like, you know, yeah. 
war is war, man. Like it is what it is. Like in the scope of Star Citizen, like yes, bugs and glitches are things that we should avoid trying to take advantage of to get a tactical advantage, to gain a tactical advantage. Mm -hmm. If you truly want to be good at the game and truly want to understand your SOPs and TTPs that you and your org have created, cheese is just kind of one of those things you don't want to fuck with, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's uh it, it, I, th- I see a lot of people getting too hung up on the choreo- the choreography of a thing. Right. Right? Like, okay, now we breach. Okay, wait. Now everyone stacks up. Nope, nope. Scoot up. Nope. Tighten up. Nope. nope. You know, things like that. So people no, want to No, 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 no. The two guy is always this guy. It's yeah. not you. It's this oh, guy. It's like, oh, what, why does it matter? He oh. should know that position or she should know that position. Yeah, and I'll, I'll probably get some flack here, but um, having worked in the Marine Corps and outside of the Marine Corps in real life, I feel like the standard Marine infantry gets really, really caught up into that stuff. They'll scream at you if you're a brand new Marine and you and you you enter the wrong place in your stack. Like they'll scream at you for 20 minutes before you get any training value out of it. You know? Yeah. So it's, once I started yeah. working outside the umbrella of the big Marine Corps, my eye, mine eyes were open yeah. to what the <laughs> fuck? Yeah, you lift up your Holy goggles. You're shit. Like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> and typically, all we see in movies and TV are those standard. You know, like. Even SF dudes will use the standard stuff that from the military, and it's like, yeah, the yeah, box, you, man. Think outside yeah, the box. Yeah, real, real SF. They, they're, they're like years ahead of like the big army or the big Marine Corps, like you mm-hmm. know, standard infantry units. They're just doing stuff that's like on no one's radar because it works. It's a simple. It's effective, and it makes sense. Because um, you can really get hung up on those things. That's my point. And so I feel like. Uh, not to bash CKD as well, because again, when we fought them, fucking, I blew up in a tank. Intense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like big picture stuff, like it's a lot of Star Citizen players and a lot of gamers, they do stuff for the sake of cool, or for the sake right, of it, right, right, right. sake of doing it, right? with no context or purpose behind why they're doing what they're doing, right? Mm-hmm. They're imitating something without the context of why they're imitating it, right? So that's not our aim here, as. Uh, Cause we're looking forward to doing more ops with CKD and like, I hope they are too. And we're looking more like OAC, everyone we've mentioned today, we're looking forward to do that, but we hope we know yes. this is just coming from a place of like, there's a lot of people not looking at bigger pictures. So if you have a plan in place, trim the fat on that. Okay. What's our real objective? Well, it would be so cool. Like, cause remember we had, we did an op is like, it would be so cool if we did a, a drop like onto their, their spawn ship and took it over. We're like, yeah, that would be so cool. And we could totally do it because we've done it before. And like, but what's the objective here? Oh, the objective here is to do this. And sometimes it's not the sexier option, but it's the right call. And it ends up winning us getting that, that, that W. Um, But it's, it's not always about that either. Right. You can still glean a lot of information, but uh, we just digressed so hard there, dude. Yeah. What? Like, (laughs) We had a we had a topic and it's yeah, now gone. We did uh, so vehicles, um, vehicles, tanks. Vehicles. So so the comp the, the the makeup for us was two two Nova tanks, um, and two dragonflies. And the overall concept of ops for or cops concept of operations for us was our piece was to basically patrol a seven hundred to fifteen hundred meter band around this bunker and um, essentially just be big and loud, right? Like again, delay. So anytime we saw mm-hmm. forces or saw vehicles, our goal was to draw them, draw them into a fight as far away from that bunker as possible. Right. Yeah. Um, keep them and busy. yeah, yeah. Keep them busy. Right. And, and I think CKD was, was, a uh, no, I don't think, I know they eventually were able to, to sneak through those lines with infantry on the, on like on foot. Mm-hmm. Uh, which was completely invisible to us in the vehicles. So good on them for that, you know? Um, but yeah, so I, you were in a tank, you were in a gunner position or driver. No, I was driving. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's so, talk about that. Let's talk about yeah. positions a little bit. Yeah. So in, inside the tank um, we've learned, and I've done a few tank battles before and the maximum effective, like it's, it's max crew is three. You have a driver, a tank commander that sits in a top turret, a coaxial turret. Um, and then you have uh, a main gun operator 
And that, those three, that is when the tank is most effective. I've heard some people say you can one-man a tank because the driver does have some control over the main gun. But I'm telling you, there is a tank is so visible, and like you need to see threats before they see you. That's like the number one key to survival. So the most effective crew for a tank is three. Like uh, we, if if I was gonna write an SOP on that, I would say maximum or minimum is two people if we're short on numbers for certain things. But it should be three people in a tank every single time. That that's my personal opinion. So. I was in a two-man tank. I was driving. I had uh, Vesper, one of our guys, on the gun. He did fantastic. We did really good, uh, um, but I made a large blunder. And <laughs> I don't know how, but at some point, I think I cycled my engines off to listen, to get some audio information, to kind of be quiet, because um, we thought we might have heard somebody or something moving or, or like a vehicle coming closer. So anyway, I think that's when I fat-fingered my shield because it's right next to it. I pressed I... So I, the whole op, we had our shields off. <laughs> I had no clue until we got, until we blew up, you know. So, um, but yeah, we had this this well piloted. I don't know who whoever's watching. If you're a CKD guy and you were f- driving that tank, like we were in a good little slug out with you. We hit you twice, so we got greedy, moved in for the kill, and exposed ourselves. Because you know, I found my shields, Ryan. I'm like, yeah, we can take one hit. Let's get this guy dead, and then. Yeah, beautiful shot, like, right in between our turret and our, our, like, weak point of armor, I guess. Anyway, I have the footage. I'll post it. And we blew up. <laughs> so, yep. shields. Turn your shields on. That's what that's my yep. biggest takeaway. Um, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, you were in a commander seat, right? In the other I tank. was, yeah. So, that was an interesting spot. I, I initially, because I was GFC for that, that op, and so my job is to make sure all the elements are doing, like, are being as effective as they possibly can, right? So um, I took what I thought was going to be the most non-intrusive uh, slot, but still be able to participate. That commander slot actually does have quite a bit of uh, um, ability to do exactly what it is, command, right? Like yeah. you could call it an, a, a, a turret, a gunner, like a, a coaxial gunner slot if you wanted to. Um, but it really does work out really well as a commander slot. You have 360 view of the tank via a turret. You can also go into third person and view things. You have the ability to um, target and ping uh, things. I don't know if I didn't try it, but I don't, I'm not sure if you can mark targets up there. That would be nice uh, if you could. Like a pin? Um, like, yeah, pin targets. That's what I meant. I heard, From what um, I understand, only the driver can pin. So, that's another note. I don't CIG. know that I agree with that, but yeah, yeah, that's a weird like. That's a weird person to put on the target. <laughs> but communicating with the gunner, like gunner, forty five degrees to the right, you know, or you know, turn forty five degrees right, and then driver forty five degrees left, you know, like uh, coordinating all of that, then using that turret as like a um, that gun as as a way to be like, this is where I see it. I shoot some tracers. The gunner gets locked on. The driver knows uh, where it's at, so those two can kind of independently operate, right? The driver knows his job is to get us in the best position without exposing us, and the gunner knows that he has to just get his gun on there. Right. Um, there's a few other little small things. I think the driver has, or the gunner has the ability to pop flares, which I think is weird, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like that should be a driver thing. <laughs> yeah, the delegation but, of responsibility is kind of weird inside the tank. Yeah, you could It tell. is, yeah. It was designed, again, CIG, so missing context there. Like, the mechanics are there. They're just in the wrong places. So maybe uh, maybe get a, uh, a tank crew on the phone and find out what they do, you know? <laughs> but, call them uh, up, man. Call them up. So it, yeah. that's interesting. I was going to ask you, on the on that gun in the commander's chair, does, do you have the compass bearings at the top of your screen? You don't. You I don't, don't know why that's not a thing in that turret slot. Uh, it's a thing in literally every other turret slot, but in that one, it's not. And uh, mm. I wonder if it was just overlooked when they were redoing all the turrets or if there's sure. something coming. I think the um, ground vehicle team is different from the ship, too. So maybe. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't even know. I can't remember if I asked Vesper on the main gun if they have the compass bearing ticks, tick marks at the yeah, top. I'm not sure. I'll have, we'll have to ask Chenkoff and Gunner or uh, yeah. Chenkoff and. Uh, Vesper, if that that was the case, mm-hmm. but and if overall, you guys are, I had fun. 
Yeah, it was um, way fun. And dude, CKD again, genuinely can fight, man. Like, oh, dude, they had some fierce. great fights, dude. We yeah. did. We had a good one. They they popped our tanks so quick. Um, I was gonna say too with tanks with infantry. What are your thoughts on that? Because we didn't have any infantry support. We had two dragonflies that could, uh, yeah, kind of support. They did. They did great. I think the dragonflies and, and the purpose for them, or what I had them doing, was uh, kind of scouting locations. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're faster. They're more nimble. They're easier to pop if you get you know. But they their goal was to keep continue moving and just spot right. Um, if you can get a gun to shift to that dragonfly and that dragonfly is offline already from that tank, then you know you've got two barrels pointing down on that tank that. And that tank's not looking at you. So, yeah, I mean, we use them as at, at, um, diversions. We use them as scouts. Harassment, um, they're quick, fire nimble. Too. Yeah, harassment fire a little bit. Like, hey, put some stress on their shields. You know, like get that tank crew a little stressed out for. Yeah. You know, oh shit, we're about to lose our shields. We're taking extra hits. You know, that, sometimes that audio can really be a mind fuck. Yeah, um, yeah, and just just the so, the sound of it going over, like the audio of someone freaking out about it, and the audio of like. That sounds, you know, you can hear that dragonfly scatter gun just popping off right next to your tank. Yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, that's some scary shit. You know, the brain does what the brain does, but, um, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some cool clips coming oh, up. Oh, infantry. We'll put them up there. Yeah. We we're talking about infantry. So, so essentially, from the, what the, I understand, the, sorry, go ahead. I cut you off. No, no, no. Go for it. Um, so the CKD, the what reason, oh, reason that took them that long is that they saw, our perimeter of tanks and we had better position at the beginning. Right. So I think they chose to dismount and go in on foot. Is that what you understood? I think that's how it went. Yeah. Right. Which, to which me, for future reference, if you're going to walk on foot, what did doc say? What was five, it? Uh, five, five minutes, minutes per click per click in heavy armor. And that's like at full tilt though. Like you're running sprinting, you know, oh, is using. it full sprint? Not full mouse speed. Um, I'm pretty sure it's full sprint. Uh, okay. So I would so say the max you can get a, a kilometer is five. It takes you five minutes to run at least one kilometer. Yes, at full sprint, full tilt. Now, if you're going okay. slower, yeah. So, you know, they were. I don't know when they dismounted. Fifteen thousand meters from us. Yes, yeah, so fifteen clicks. So five minutes. There, you know, they're well over the time limit. So, uh, but I think to defend CKD again. The time constraint thing, that's a factor in your planning needs to be addressed. But I, I would choose, if, if I'm less visible on the ground and I had the time, if time was permitting, I think CKD made the right call. Dismount. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, 100%. Win. Yeah, and especially because they didn't know how many forces we had dedicated to that. So why slug it out? Like, let's just infiltrate. It's slower. Right. But it, it worked. I mean, they got to the objective. Um, the only thing they failed was the time constraint. And so it was like, that's it. Yeah. yeah. I guess they didn't breach the bunker either, but. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Cause they, we just duped um, it out outside, you know, yeah, the, just, the, the, the okay. overall for, for context, the overall objectives I think was the CKD had to hold the terminal room for five minutes. That's and right. overall they had 30 minutes to do that. So that timer would stop. Dude, that's if, a, if CKD had breached, cleared and held that terminal room. The t- overall timer would have stopped. Yeah. While they have five minutes and then they had just had to hold it for five minutes. Um, and that's, so such yeah, a I don't, short I'm not time. sure that they made it to the terminal. That's such a short time to do the assault. That's when you need air support, you need air power. And those were kind of in the parameters of the game. They were not allowed for this one because we were focusing yeah. again on, on ground vehicles and, and, and ground right. assaults. Yeah. You need, you need, well, I time. think everybody walked away from that vehicle wise and went, Oh my fucking God. I learned some cool shit here. Oh so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, uh, but on the infantry piece on our side, it would have been nice to have a few more either OAC guys or a couple of um, privateers stuffed in the back of those Nova tanks that we could deploy out. Like, yo, I need you to deploy here with rail guns, and you're yes. in a now you're in a tight ambush position close to the fight where you can get eyes on. You can start taking shots. We can be the big shiny thing driving around. So the tanks looking at us not understanding that there are infantry also firing rail guns at, at that individual. So like if you're talking about just vehicle tactics, I think we did the best we had, we could with what we had. Right. 
if you want to go beyond that, I think you add a couple, a small anti-tank team, like maybe two guys, right? Yeah, like, and that's another thing too. We're so limited because of server pop. You know, to yeah. do these larger scale things, I think a lot of the community is ready to go. I know that CKD, OAC, and the Pathfinders too that we're going to be facing soon. Um, I know that they're they're wanting these large scale things. We want um, theaters of war style battles so bad, and we just can't because we're limited. Twenty five people what? against twenty five people is still a good fight, but small. It's yeah, it's it's. Uh... You end up having people sitting out. You end up having not the full complement of, you know, your um, structure uh, available to you, right? And so if you're a commander or a ground force commander, whatever, you're some kind of a leader and you're sort of orchestrating all of this stuff and you don't have access to all your tools, it's kind of frustrating, right? Especially if you sat down, took the time, wrote it out, practiced it. Like, it's just, you know, and I got it. It's a server constraint and hopefully that's lifted soon or at least raised um to a level i would i don't know man i, I don't know how yeah <laughs> i'm going off I'm, this is a huge di digression here but like it well, would kind of be yeah. nice if we could set a private server with our own pop on it for events like this but again that's a digression from like yeah star citizen and the creation of the pu and all this other stuff but you know maybe it is something like theaters of war where we right. can you know have host our own private right thing and say well the max here is 100 because we've shortened the the playing area a little bit right so we can keep more assets so we can go up to 100 and do a 50 v 50 right. in a very you know like we miss out on some of those big picture things like moving logistics and all of that but i don't know maybe uh, something to allow us to have more than 50 people sort of engage with each other, I think would be pretty cool. It would be. Yeah. And it would help flesh out a lot of things because manpower is needed. Like, you know, and they say, Oh, some orgs have a thousand people. Some organizations have 20, 10, but like right. it really doesn't matter at this point because the max you can never have in a server is 50, but then who do you fight? You know, you, if you have 40 guys log on, you fight the other 10 guys on the server, they're just going to leave, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. They're just, they'll just sit there. So who do you, who do you fight in the verse? Right. So we're not there yet. The game's not there yet. It'll get there, but it's, uh, so we're limited on some of these ops we can do. That's why I think you and I have, have developed our dart tactics, like our direct action, rapid response tactics. Um, we want to get to the objective with using as little manpower as possible because we want our, our infantry squad, our, you know, our pipe hitters that hit the ground, we want them to be strong. So we, we have, you know, max it like two teams of six, you know, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe more. We could go up to 15 people on the ground, I think, and then still have, you know, our mighty eighth elements that support us in the air, still have the manpower they need to man a hammerhead or a retaliator or whatever they're going to do, multi-crew and then fighter support. Right. So like the makeup is, it's really, it's really strategic. It's like, you know, like a, like a soccer, like, a, like football. Mm -hmm. and you got 11 men on the team. Like how, who, who who's going to play? What, what players yeah. are you going to put out there? You can't put all your players in. So it's really strategic. Yeah. So it's, it's important. I'm glad we talked on that actually. Yeah. We digressed hardcore, but like, Super hard. It's important. It's all part of that planning and the things we've been talking about for episode after episode. These things matter. What your intentions are, your focus, your context matter. And the clicking pixel part, that just comes naturally to all of us. We can all do that. But, like, can you get you guys in the right place at the right time with the right equipment to do the right things with the right people? We've just added to that list, like, the past couple episodes. It started out yeah. with three, right place, right time, right equipment. And then you were like, right people. And like, but doing the right things also. Because if you yep. have your best team on the field and they're out there fucking shit up like CKD was, but, but over here the objective is not being fulfilled, you know, then right. it's who wins, right? Who wins? Well, it's that uh, another terminology is, right, you won the battle, but did you win the war? And that's right. a question that you already always have to kind of keep asking yourself is, all right, cool. I won this FPS engagement, but at what cost? Right. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, there's and I, as gamers, dude, like we don't really pay attention to that cost because a lot of games take that off our plate. Right. At what they cost? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I got I got forty kills this game, but how many times did yeah, you die? Yeah, but your team lost in battlefield. Yeah, yeah, but you didn't help anybody else, and the objective was to hold point A, you know, A, B, C. Right. But you're over here just sniping. I know you see that all the time in every game. Overwatch. Oh, yeah. uh, what's the other one? CS:GO. Everything people yeah. are chasing those stats, so and that's cool. I like that about gaming, but you know, that's and that is yeah. I mean, there is definitely that's the type of specific type of gaming is there for those people that enjoy that kind of stuff. But you know, we're more of the the we're of the different type of thinking that you know mm -hmm. teamwork and objective based wins mean more to us than how many kills somebody got or yes. I blew up fifteen ships or right. Those are personal accolades, and, and you should be proud of those things. Yeah. Yeah, but did you did you survive it long enough to win the war? You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Can you can you uh, share in the spoils, or do those go to the the, the people who right. lived on? I, right. I think that doing this podcast is cool because it, it unearths these orgs that have that same mentality as the privateers do of like we like to um, win the war, not just a battle. Right. Like in, in that whole. So if you break down an event, an event is full of objectives. Right. You have to complete these objectives, but you can complete all of them and still not win. Right. If you focus too much time on one objective or the other. And it's mm -hmm. that's why having that that person sort of stand back and like look at it and go, OK, this tank team's taking way too fucking long, bro. Break contact. Move forward. Right. Like just go. Yeah. Yeah. Taking the ground. Uh Pressing onto the objective is paramount. But yeah. um, so overall, an eye-opening experience for all of us. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, tanks fun. super fun. Tanks are really powerful in the game, but they they have a lot of vulnerabilities as well. So I find I think a tank is 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 enhanced. If I could get five to six guys supporting each tank, I mean, in real life, a full infantry squad of thirteen marines supports one tank. <laughs> like that's how that works. Um, yeah. because they're so, so vulnerable, especially in like heavily wooded areas or urban areas. Um, they bring a lot of very specific power, but they're also exposed. Well, so, it's eyes, right? Yeah. Like it's, yeah. I mean, Visible anybody that thinks an M1 Abrams is like the only, I only need an M1 Abrams and I'm good. You're so <laughs> fucking wrong. It's oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Like we stopped your using tank can't see as well as 13 individual sets of eyes around that tank. Right. Yes. Um, so, and then hearing go ahead things and think as that, well, but... like hearing, so you can't hear yeah, shit yeah. in the tank. Yeah. So, yeah, we, I think we stopped, I mean, America stopped using the tanks in, in the Middle East. I mean, I'm sure there's a few, but they're, they're not. That's because we were just using them as keys at that point. <laughs> Skeleton keys. <laughs> That's right. Open you know? this wall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They just, they were basically um, like really heavy battering rams, right? <laughs> Do we do we really need an eighty five thousand dollar fucking battering ram or skeleton key like? Oh yeah, they're like eighty million, I think. No, 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 but I was talking about a round, like a oh. single round. Oh, a single <laughs> round, know? yeah, eighty five. Yeah. yeah, you know. Can we make a whole? Can we I don't make know a what the price here? is. Yeah. You got eighty five grand? Yeah, that's probably what it yeah. is, dude. Per saber I've, round. Per saber, yeah. Like, yeah. is that necessary? <laughs> you know, then all the money they got to pay out to the VA, <laughs> to the veterans and VA when dudes can't hear because a fucking skeleton key went off next to them. What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dude, like I stood next to an Abrams. They have no shit, like a jet engine on the back, you know. And dude, I like I stood next to him, and I ha I've always worn G Shock watches, and I was on the the phone, and I was like, all of a sudden, I felt like I was getting a sunburn. I was like, ah, oh, ah. And they have a little phone for you to talk to the commander, you know. So I'm like telling him what to do, and my hand was up like this, jet engine blast right here, and my my hand got really warm, and I was like, oh, you move. And then after I get done, I look at my watch, and it's just like melted. I was like, oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> so yeah, it was just a shitty watch, but yeah, they're they're just all around deadly. So tanks are cool, yeah. and I'm really glad they're in Star Citizen. I think we need to use them more. Um, cause we just don't know. I, I feel so inadequate knowing like the effective ranges of scanning and IR signatures and shit. I need to get better at that. Um, and I know a lot of the guys in our group do know that stuff. So I just, it's just a matter of me sitting down with them. Yeah. With <laughs> FPS radar and scanning coming online, I kind of has, ha hesitated, but I, I guess it's probably not a bad idea to understand the, like the basic fundamentals of it. 
um, right before that comes out. So that's one less thing you have to kind of worry about. Yeah, because so. you and I have been rolling on the ground just like boots on the ground in Star Citizen for so long. Like we never it's need the best to kind be, of life, baby. Yeah, it is. We never need to worry about like that's the safest place in a battle to me is on the ground with some boys yep. <coughs> having your back. Like no one's gonna yep. radar ping you and then launch a yeet at you or swarm <laughs> yeah. you. Um, if they find you, that's a different story. If a bird above you does see you, it's pretty daunting. But if they're in a light fighter and you got rail guns, you can handle. We can handle it. We can handle yeah. a lot of vehicle options that come towards an infantry guy. So yep. it's exciting. So CK did um, do great. OAC did fucking phenomenal as well. Yeah. In those fire And hats guys. off to the privateers, man. They oh, yeah. showed up and uh, tried out something new and did well at it. So good for right. them. Yeah, we only lost one tank because I didn't turn the shields on. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. No, no shields. Daft. We, no shields. We Hobbit. did lose a. We did lose a privateer on a dragonfly to uh, <laughs> to an Ewok. That's <laughs> but uh, yeah, to Luke Skywalker that, chopping the front end was, of his dragonfly off. Yeah, it was literally which, like a scene Luke from Skywalker Indoor, in this. Yeah, Luke Skywalker in this analogy, he was a uh, invisible tree. So yeah, <laughs> it just blows up. Yep. So funny. Um, a good fun. So yeah, that that concludes that. Um, how are we doing on time, Mallory? We're at about forty minutes. Perfect. So oh, we're yeah. gonna we're let's gonna jump into IFF. Let's do it. Um, I'll let you take it away. What is what is IFF? So IFF, right? Um, something that's somewhat often overlooked in games. Normally, again, because most games just kind of give it to us, right? Like it's just something that's handed to us. Right. Um, we know either through a HUD or it's like just, red versus you know, blue. It, it's in the Halo days. Red versus blue. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But IFF is identifying friend or foe, and it's the ability that they are systems and uh, mechanics and items that can separate you from a uh, friend and foe right so uh what some examples some real life examples of what that might look like is uh you look at the u.s marine corps they have an, uh, a, a uniform right that's very specific to them um other things are like rank insignia um on on uniforms that I, helps identify multiple things but um you know just another one of those extra pete like you see somebody in marpat okay well is he wearing marpat correctly or is that somebody that just took marpat and put it on doesn't know what they're doing right um so mm -hmm. there's a lot of little things like that that sort of help identify an individual and their intentions um and that's what basically i have thought this and that's scalable all the way up right like if you color your vehicles a certain way if you wear a certain color chem light if you have your magazines uh and i'm talking now in the scope of the game your magazine stacked a certain way, you wear your gun on a certain side, right? Like the, all these things can be little identifiers to other friendlies that know that, right? Uh, one big one for us is undersuits. So we yeah. use undersuits to identify, like somebody can go get all our armor and put it on and imitate us. But if they don't understand how our undersuit system works, then, yeah. you know, that's just another way for us to identify that that person's maybe not friendly, right? Um, right. Our armor, the way we wear our armor is, is a huge, just a quick glance. Oh, that's a fucking privateer. Got it. Cool. Right. Yeah. Um, we've talked about many different ways to sort of expand that um, going into detail. Like, do we need to de de define what a medic looks like? Um, you know, does the team leader need to stand out or something else that we've used and used heavily was colored arms um, more yes. specifically the ADP stuff. But that was able that that was cool when we were running multiple teams and we were able to sort of identify which team was where. Mm -hmm. And then for the individual and you know, team member, they can go, Well, I'm blue team. Wait, all these guys are wearing red arms. You <laughs> yeah. know, uh, I'm in the wrong team. I need to go find the guys wearing blue arms, right? Um, so it's just a quick way to identify that you're in the right place with the right people, right? Um, yes. And also uh, to avoid blue on blue scenarios. So blue on mm -hmm. blue, for those who don't know, is just team killing, like on accident. Right. Because mm -hmm. it gets pretty crazy. It's Sometimes visibility is hard. Um, sometimes it, you might not can, have an yeah. optic. You know, you see someone moving over there. Is that my guy? I don't know. Uh, well, your brain, when you're doing this <clears throat> stuff, your brain is doing 100 things at a time. Yeah. Right? Like it's 
is my gun loaded? Is what's my HUD? Who's around me? What's going on? I'm looking for bad guys. And the the easier you can make it on your brain to go, oh, that's a privateer, and then continue on, right? Like that's a split second thing. Hmm. Whereas if you look at somebody and like that's not our armor, I'm yeah. shooting, right? Who, like who fuck's that guy? It's one of the yeah, right. It 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 it. it eradicates a bunch of fucking comms like audio comms like is that are you friendly yeah are you fr- who, who's it are you friendly who's this you know like all that communication goes away because it's like oh <laughs> yeah that's a cherry let's move on you know and a lot of other games doesn't do, know what he's doing <laughs> like games like rust or arc survival stuff like that where you're doing raids and things like they do the the jump check but it has to be like initiated hey i see is that you on the hill do a crouch check yeah. and they go do good that's jump. iff that's IFF. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, uh, Tarkov does an armband system, you know, yeah. something subtle that just, oh, that guy's got a green armband. That's friendly because there is no HUD in that game, you know? Exactly. Like, and sometimes, to be honest, there's no HUD in Star Citizen. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, And that's a, one of the reasons why we implemented it was it because is. the HUD system is so inconsistent that um, we wanted something that we could control to be able to identify friendlies. There are other times when we're not all in the same group either because no. having fucking 50 icons on your screen is the worst thing in the world. Right. So so some things you know. we do to mitigate and to help with identify friend or foe is, number one, I think the most important thing is we don't rely on a party marker because how right. many of you raise your hand in the comments like have you been you've been in a big party and you can't see that one guy that everyone needs to rally on because he doesn't have a party marker that's annoying right so what was happening to us in our old org we would roll into SPK and we were doing infantry squad stuff and like you know close quarters combat in these like space stations right at, at SPK and we go in there and it's kind of poorly lit and we're all wearing the same exact armor which was great so we could all know hey you're all friendly But then we would split into two groups and it was like, I have no idea where the fuck my group is. And I can't, Mm -hmm. you know, we would, it would be on the fly. It would need to happen. Or even if it was done preemptively, now I have to take the time and look through this swath of like player icons to see, okay, where is Dr. Fork? He is my team leader. Where did he go? And I can't see him because there's six other names in the way. It's like, dude, dude. Okay. Oh. So what ends up happening is we ended up shooting each other a couple times because SBK, there's a lot of PVP there. Um, we ended up being in separate elevators. We're like, yo, red team is, or like team one is missing someone. And then we're like, oh, uh, you know, like one of these things is not like the other. Who is it going to be? Because this team has six and we're down three or whatever. It's just super confusing. So Echo and I came up with, we put it in a huge document because it was a Milsim org, right? We had to go up the chain of command. Uh, anyway, and we had to like fight for this. But we came up with a solution that was so simple and it was so fucking effective. But like w- people above us in the chain of command in this notional thing, like couldn't see it. So it took us like, how long did it take for them to finally approve it? Yeah, I think uh, I think mostly on our level, like everyone was pretty accepting of it, and we kind of just used it anyways. But yeah. like, it wasn't it wasn't like an org wide accepted thing for uh, quite a while. I, whole, I, don't, I don't remember the exact time, but it was. I felt like a while. Yeah, it was kind of dumb. So we just started doing it, and then it just became it became it infiltrated into other groups in our community that yeah. needed it too. But a simple I mean, arm. We're just, not the originators of this, right? Like we we had this idea and we shared it with our org. Um, I think I've seen other orgs do something similar. They have. Um, I a lot of a lot of orgs have a uniform. They want to keep to that uniform. I get that. I understand mm-hmm. that. Um, that helps with IFF. It was just an idea that we had that took that one step further, utilizing mechanics that we currently had in the game yes. to overcome potential bugs and glitches. You know that Star Citizen had. So yeah, and and maintain order in our tactical operations. Yeah. So all we did yeah. was change our arms. You know, if you have ADP arms, there's about 75 different colors you can choose from. Yeah. And there are, and that's expanding now. Yeah. There are multiple different types of armors that have different colors. numerous amounts of colors that you can mm-hmm. absolutely use, especially medium and light, if that's something your org is right. using. But yeah, colored arms, super effective. So instead of saying alpha and bravo team, and then like remembering that I'm an alpha, because it changes every time we play, you know, it, so we just decided, hey, Set teams, red team, blue team, green team, 
gold team. Like we had so many different teams at one point planned out. Mm -hmm. um, I think the most we ever saw in that group was three. We had a squad of t 12, so three teams of four. We had yep. red, green, and gold. Uh, extremely yeah. effective. And you could, it's so cool to see your teammates, and it made some really co pockets of camaraderie. Um, it did. Yep. Yeah. Kind of, that can be bad at sometimes, but, you know, it worked out. It can be. Yeah. It definitely can. Um, I mean, it can go a little too far, but um, it did, at least for the team that we were in, it helped us build a, a huge amount of camaraderie with each other. And that just led to like success so, so many other places. Right. Yeah. I mean, all off the base, basis of identifying friend or foe. Right. And we, bonded together we played together yeah. we became friends you know like it was. real genuine friends and that team had like has some legendary status whether people want to recognize it or not doesn't matter because it was within our own you know circles it was like hey you were a red right. team oh yeah that was cool like you guys did some cool shit and we did it's all on video message us if you want to see it we'll get it to you <laughs> but uh it was fun so w implementing that is crucial and i think we don't ever we very, very seldomly, like, stop and reform a party. Um, we, we do it, you know, for casual play and, like, you know. If there's a tactical time, pause. Yeah, sure. We yeah. can. Yeah. We can but in the heat of the moment, no. if you can't see a fucking icon, I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wait, can we stop? Can we get a party? I need a. I can't see the party. Okay. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. if you're with your team and you're all wearing the same uniform, like, you should be, you should be fine. Like you yeah. should roll with each other enough to go. Okay, I'm with red team. Like what? What color am I? I'm red. Oh, you're red. I should be here. You're here. Yep. So yep. it really said, and we actually encourage doing it. Sometimes we don't roll with party. We haven't done that for a while, but we should get back to that. Like no party markers. Yeah. You know, I know it's like, oh, well, then I can't access the ship. It's like, well, we'll figure that out. But like, you know, disband the party. Um, also, what we've been doing lately is super effective. Is is not relying on a full. If we have 25 people on a team in a PVP op, we don't we don't have 25 people in the same party. We break off into no. to three, four different parties depending on what's needed. And it's so helpful. Because that's how strongly we rely and how confident we are in our procedures for IFF. Yeah. We know. Also, so. release the colored fucking chem lights to us, please. CIG. Oh, yeah. Stop making those. Stop making us buy that shit. Yeah. Just release one chem light that you can click a fucking button and it changes colors. You know, can I we have, have that. I have so many uh, of those that I bought. I need to give them to the privateers. You just reminded me. So also hit me up. Let us color our fucking armor. CIG. <laughs> yes, man. I cannot wait. Sorry, that was harsh. That was Please, a CIG. Harsh. Let us color our armor. Please. I came on strong there. I apologize. <laughs> Uh, Jared, you know, if you're watching, you understand what I'm saying, right? Marines like their crayons. We like coloring. Let us color Yeah, man. Our Come on. Ah. Give us crayons, CIG. Crayons. We want them. We'll eat them. I'll eat it on stream. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but it's on, true. I'll stream the podcast. We're long overdue for that. Like, especially with the heavy armor. Like, we yes. have three sets that are we, viable. Four you have maybe. shaders in the game. They're, they're in the game. You, you sell us paints all the fucking time. That's true. Just Flip the fucking switch. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be so Don't, cool, man. And I I know someone's going to comment, well, actually, it takes five artists and 42 uh, network developers to make yeah. this function happen. Make it happen. <laughs> you, well, you're making, you've made over $400 million. Oh, dude. It got the developers. Make it fucking happen. Please. Especially because right now with the state of the game, I've never felt more immersed in a star citizen than when I can like log out of my ship in my bed. And, like, mm -hmm. have all my gear in my ship and, like, go acquire more gear and take it back to a place and store it. Like, I feel like it's an actual MMO now. Like, I'm getting there. So, like, if I can just customize my armor, if I can pick the same set of armor that everybody's wearing, um, mm -hmm. you know, the most popular one out there or whatever. And, like, if I can make it my own even more, that's what's cool. Same thing with the yeah. ships we were talking about. Like, let me buy an Argo Mull and put all the different modules on it to make it my own so it's not even a mining right. ship it's like my own concoction um yeah yeah so i won't even get into patches but someday oh nice oh CIG. you're talking about like an emblem yeah, yeah. like a patch yeah. emblem yeah you could do that no. in like halo reach i think or some halo you could put a, an emblem an image on yeah. your shit so 
Listen, I, and I realize that we're talking about this as if the game is a live service, and to some degree, it kind of is. But, oh, totally. Uh, and, but okay, let me rephrase it. Please, can we have colored uh, <laughs> chem lights and colored armor and colored ships uh, in the hands of the backers so we can test that function for you and yes. see if it works and you can make tweaks for it? We would really appreciate that. <laughs> That's a way better way to say it. Like, hey, let us yeah. test this for you. <laughs> we're ready. Yeah. Let it, can we test this out? We're we'll ready. Take the we know you have it. We're ready. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I need to get those to the privateers. I bought all those little. Yeah. If, for those of you that don't know, Chem lights um, are the only, another way for IFF. We used them during Xeno Threat. That was Echo's idea. Mm-hmm. It's fucking amazing. And we just told we would tell the server because it was all a PvP or sorry PVE event. It was like, hey, if you're gonna be in these cargo places, turn your chem lights on. Because like I can't. I it's it sucks when you go in and you get you get a guy who's trying to play rando. Z, he's a rando, yeah. and he's wearing Xeno Threat armor. <laughs> Like yeah, because he picked it. I mean, good for him. He looted it, got some armor, you know? Yeah. And then we, we have to smoke him because he looks like an NPC. So, and mm-hmm. then then he gives us a crime stat, and then we're like, Jesus, why, what? You know, or you can, like, defend but yourself. But it worked. I was surprised at how uh, responsive people, like, random people were to, like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I'll put a pink fucking chem light on. NPCs <laughs> yeah. won't have chem lights, you know? <laughs> well, let me snap one on so I don't get fucking shot. Yeah, like, the Star Citizen community is ready and willing to use the things you put in the game. Yep. If you have a reason for it. Like, that was proven. Sometimes, uh, most of the time, it's to a fault. Oh, hey, we made this new stealth dropship that's exactly the same as every other dropship. It just has stealth in it, but stealth isn't in the game yet. So everybody buys it and uses it. Oh, wow. It's a prowler. You know, to a fault, that's the wrong ship to use. Like, we've we've talked at nauseum about that, so we'll leave it, but, like, same thing with the chem lights. It's like, if you give us a reason to use it, wow. Now, all of a sudden, this stupid item that I've never wanted to use in the game, now it's like one of the most it, useful things. I'd be curious to know, uh, or at least talk to the developer, or, or get some feedback from the developer or group of developers or whoever that came up with that idea and understand what their intention was for that, because that thing has so many fucking uses, and it's a cheap little pink fucking flare man yeah. like yeah. that to me to me that is like a mainstay of my kit in star citizen oh absolutely that that little pink chem that pink flare man it's actually required in every brander's kit we haven't formulated yeah. an official kit yet because we're still waiting for the chips to fall see where they land as far as like where the gear is and how the inventory is going um right. but i think we are due and within our community to have a, a more rigid kit thing like we're, we're pretty loose with the weapons you want to use and ammo you want to carry but like everyone yeah. should have a, a one one equipped cam light on the chest and then two maybe one or two more different colors in your you know inventory slots mm-hmm. um yeah yes super useful tool super IFF, useful. like it, it, apply it anywhere you can right it, even if that's a, a specific tank uh, a, you know a, a skin on a on a yeah. uh a ground vehicle if Some it's, uh, do that you know too. it's hard yeah it's kind of hard to ask like community members to sort of <laughs> extend beyond what they've already spent on the game and and buy these like five dollar paints and stuff like <coughs> you know i get it but like use that stuff it's available to you you know yeah. like if you get us a, a skin or able to if we're ever able to purchase the skins in games at least you know right like give us that ability to sort of utilize that technology and test it and see if it works right yes is it flavor text for us or flavor visual sure but it's also there's a real reason why we we want to use that stuff and it has everything to do with you know not shooting people we don't want to shoot yeah and like that's that's a really good point you just made the the paints and the skins available for ships are huge for iff too Mm -hmm. um like for a while there, like our buddy Chankov, he fly, he was flying his cutlass steel around, and he had the, uh, the like old Russian camouflage paint. And at yeah. Jump Town, like it it took all the guesswork out of it. I was like, that's yeah. Chankov's thing. Like, it's so it was unique. parked on the ground next to an array of other ships that didn't have that or yeah. other cutlass steels, and we're like, oh, that's oh, oh which Chankov's. one are we loading it on? Blow oh. up all the other cutlass steels except for that except one. Except for that one with the skin. Yep. Yeah. So yep. 
yeah, it just really makes a very, very effective communicate lines of communication. And, and sometimes they're not even verbal. If it's already established mm-hmm. and written, you know, like I'm in blue team, I don't need to ask anybody where my team is. I can visually right. see them. Same thing with like, who's we'll got the touch on this when we do the com structure or the com one, I we're going to take a couple of weeks to write that. Cause I really want, like, yeah. I, I really feel like communications is one of the most important things that's very, very often overlooked um, or used too much uh, <laughs> yeah. to to sort of communicate with people. So I, I, I really want to take the time and give all, you, the viewers and listeners, like my honest, no shit, like assessment of communications of why it works and where it should apply and what types of communication there are and the whole like the whole array of like not just here's a radio here's the button and why is it fun right like iff just kind of you know also plays a part into that so it absolutely does i think um i would attribute a large portion of any success uh that we've had as a group in any combat is because of iff Mm -hmm. like um just seeing just from what i've seen on youtube and seen happen at jump town and random places. If, uh, if I know where my team is at, then I definitely know where I don't know exactly where the enemy are, but with, when they pop up, I, I know where they are. I'm not right. ever being like, Hey, is that you? Who is that? Who's the guy with the bullhorn helmet? Who's the guy in the pink armor? Like, right. And mm-hmm. it's just so much simpler. Holy smokes. So I would encourage anyone listening, like spend some time, understanding how to identify friends or foe. How does that work? If you're rolling with a group of two, if you're rolling with a group of 20 or 200, it's all applicable. And it's probably the biggest key to anyone's success. You know, it's the foundation yep. for so much. Don't rely on parky party markers. Yeah. Do don't it. rely on party markers. Don't ever rely on party markers. So that's, um, IFF2 is also a very, there's a lot of verbal that you can do. Like we were talking about the Rust or other games. Mm-hmm. Jump check, crouch check. Yep. That's like two people in communication. Lean check. Yeah, lean check, whatever yeah. it is, so they can conduct that visual medium to, to get the communication out there. So they do yep. overlap a lot. But, um, yeah, we discussed a lot. Uh, there's just so we many. We digressed a lot. We digressed this is a lot. episode seven. Digression. Digression. <laughs> How to digress from your original topic. Yeah. Um, right. A manual, if you will. That's what we're writing. Thanks. Thanks for listening to us drone on again. Yeah. Um, so layers of IFF too. We didn't really touch on that, but there's so many all the way from. Yeah. Just that simple. Undersuits, helmets, undersuits. armors, yep. just individual armor pieces, chem lights, uh, paints, Even skins. Weapons you carry. Weapons, how mm-hmm. you carry your weapons, where you place your gear, how your gear is configured. Here's an example. Like for me, I wear uh, on on our armor, I wear a chem light at the top and I wear three grenades. Yep. You can almost always identify me because that's how I have my shit. Now, most of the other privateers wear their stuff like that too, but that's just another way that I know like, oh, that's a fucking privateer, not some asset wearing our armor. Right. And it's like, who's got the rail gun? It's the guy with the rail gun on his back. <laughs> it's like that. Right. It sounds dumb, but that's that simple, you know. And then right. when we were rolling um, in our previous org, like if you saw somebody with a rail gun and gold armor, who was it? You know it the was, answer. It was, it was gold in gold armor. Yeah. Oh, Felix. Yeah. Oh my Felix. God, Felix. Every yeah, time. Felix nightmare. Absolutely. It's Felix nightmare every time. Or like gold yeah. armor, rail gun. That's Felix, no doubt. I, I don't even see his party marker, his icon. He's like 100 meters away. But there he is. Felix. That's him. Where's Felix? Oh, there he is, right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, same thing, too, with Doc, like Doc, Dr. Fork in the Lung, who now is Lord Karna. Vitches. Karna rifle on his back. Kar- Karna on his fucking back, dude. dude I he's a, Red arms, Karna. That's Doc. Dude, he loves the Karna so much, he's a carnivore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, he's deaf. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> with a K. Carnivore with a K. <laughs> It's so, yeah. almost as funny as you not turning your tank shields on. I know, dude. <laughs> they call me <laughs> Daft No Shields Hobbit. I don't I don't like that. Yeah, we had a good time with that. We were making jokes. No, it was good. Also, um, uh, if you can at any point in time see Daft of the Verse, 
or you want to comment on this video or whatever, make sure you send something in there about tank shields. Nobody in the privateers let them live it down. So. No, yeah. And if you put that in the verse, if you see me in there and you say, hey, Daft, did you turn your tank shields on? Like, <laughs> like oh, shit. That's I'm like, hey, a listener. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Hey, random I, At some point, I'm going to massively fuck up, and I'll have that hanging over my head at some point. Oh, yeah. I know I will. That's how call signs are made and shit. Like that, mm-hmm. I mean, the, the name Daft Hobbit, for those of you listening, Hobbit was my call sign in the Marines. Uh, it's not like an official thing, but it was like my friends giving me a call sign to be funny. Yeah. Um, and it stuck, and so people would yell like, hey, Hobbit, get down. Come over here. Whatever you're doing. <laughs> um, it stuck. Uh to a point, and it was funny. So that's where my gamer oh. tag comes from as well. Shield Hobbit is now the new call sign. Yeah, shield. No shields, Hobbit. <laughs> shield Hobbit. Yeah. <laughs> no no mithril for this Hobbit on my tank. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Um, but that's pretty much time. it for episode seven. Yeah. You got any other remarks? No, nah, man. I think, uh, yeah. Uh, as always, this is an open discussion. Uh you know, we're not again, sitting here saying we know everything. And there's a lot of times that I think we let our experience in the military get in the way of, of the actual game itself. So if you find that happening or hear that, like by all means, open the discussion with us. We're, we're willing to talk about it. You know, we, we want to, we want to improve our, our gameplay and our thought processes, um, our mental attitudes, all that stuff all the time. So if you got a better way of doing it um, or you were wrong, like, please let us know. Do it. Yeah, we're we're open to that, and almost every I can't speak for every privateer, but that's the the mentality we want as well. Um, within I the can. privateers, you can, yeah, mo- yeah, mo- most private, not most, all privateers have that same mentality. So you know, you we're, we're we're open to feedback and, and constructive criticism yeah. all the time from the man himself. He says it, so now I can say that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, this has been great. Episode seven. That's a wrap. In, the, in the books. Books done. Right. Well, again, Check. I'm Daft Hobbit. This is Echo 5 Romeo, people. Hit us up on the social meds. Uh, get involved. Come find us. And we'll see you on the ground. On the ground. That was way better. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>